Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I begin in the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful. Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we continue with our discussions on the psychology of Surah Fatiha, of Surah Alhamd. Um, in this, our seventh discussion, uh, we move towards the final verse of the seven verse surah. And in our discussions, the approach we've been taking is to see how can we get greater benefit from that which we are already doing. Alhamdulillah, we see in the Islamic teachings that just with the five obligatory prayers in a day, we would recite this Surah Fatiha 10 times a day, twice in each of the five obligatory prayers. So we see that this is a Surah that we're supposed to engage with from the very beginning of the day at the time of Fajr, all the way through to the end at Isha. And we've been looking at the question of why might that be? What are the different kinds of renewal, of rejuvenation that this surah offers that perhaps might give us a clue as to why this particular surah has been recommended to us to be recited within the prayers as well as so frequently, for instance, as a gift for those who are unwell or those who have departed. We began our discussions by looking at some famous ahadith uh, regarding the, the beauty and the value of the surah and how it encompasses the wisdom of the entirety of the holy book. We began by examining uh, uh, the early verses, looking at the mercy and the all-encompassing compassion of Allah, right the way through to the aspect of accountability. Um, and how we may balance the confidence that we have in Allah's grace and the motivation and, and, and renewal that that offers for us, balanced with a sense of responsibility for that which we do and, of course, the accountability for our omissions as well. All of that combined then lead us to the conclusion of this holy verse with of, of this holy surah with the seventh verse of having previously asked for guidance to be put on the right path <laughs> we then move on to the final verse of what path is that just to clarify that further so having said guide us to the straight path we then clarify that with the request of sirat al ladina an anta alayhim so to clarify that guide us to the straight path, the path of those who you have blessed, not the path of those who have incurred your wrath or those who have gone astray. There is so much depth in this one verse that for this discussion, I will only look at the first part of this verse. And inshallah, in our next discussion, we'll look at the second part of this verse. So rich is the context and the depth of meaning that it offers. So we discussed that the idea of of sirat, the, 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 the path, um, being a specific one. And this is why uh, we were able to contrast the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his holy progeny uh, with Surah Fatiha requesting guide us to the straight path in the definite in contrast to other verses of the, of the, of the Holy Quran for instance in the teachings of Isa salam, in Surah Maryam um, regarding um, following a straight path in Allah Rabbi wa Rabbikum fa'abudu Surely Allah is my Lord and your Lord. This is a straight path. And we distinguish that teaching of Jesus, of Isa salam, with the teaching of Muhammad, peace upon him and his holy progeny, about the straight path. That sets us up for the discussion of the final verse of Sirat al Ladina Ananta Alayhim. Of that straight path that was. Uh, treaded by those who have uh, benefited from your grace. And we look at this not just from a historical point of view 
and from a theological point of view, but also from a psychological point of view with regard to how we can implement these teachings in our daily lives. So just to set the context, this idea of the path of those who have been blessed, when we look at the commentators um, uh, who have provided commentaries, tafsir, on this, we see that from across the uh, Muslim community, from Shia scholars, Sunni scholars, they have cited a particular verse. So whether, whether we look at uh, Sheikh Tabrisi in his famous Majma al-Bayan, whether we look at Qurtubi from the Sunni traditions and Kushairi, um, who was both uh, a Shafi scholar and a, a famous Sufi, they all refer back to, in, to, to understand the idea of anamta alayhim uh, with regard to a verse from Surah Nisa, Surah 4, verse 69, which talks about whosoever obeys Allah and the Messenger, they are the ones who Allah has blessed, and the prophets, the truthful ones, the ones who have witnessed the oneness of Allah and the righteous, they, what beautiful companions are they? Now we need to look in a little bit more detail because the operative term here in this in, in this verse in verse uh, in Surah four verse sixty nine is Alladina an Amallahu. They are the ones who Allah has blessed. But unfortunately, if we just stop there, um, it creates a degree of ambiguity because uh, that that could mean quite a large group of people, whereas in our understanding of verse 7 of Surah Fatiha, Sirat al ladina Anamta Alayhim, it actually is much more defined than that. Because when we bring in other verses of the Quran to complement the verse we just looked at from Surah Nisa, when we bring in Surah Azab, and in particular uh, verse 33 of this chapter 33, we have an even greater degree of clarification. And the picture is brought into even sharper resolution as to whose path we mean by Sirat al ladina Anamta Alayhim. Of course, this uh, verse 33 of Surah 33 guides us, which says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهَ لِيُذْهِبَ أَنْكُمْ رِدْسَ أَحْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُتَّحِّرَكُمْ تَطْحِيرًا Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. That Allah SWT intends only to remove any kind of impurity uh, from the household of the Holy Prophet, the Ahlul Bayt, and to give them a thorough purification, the greatest form of purification. So when we think about going back to Surah Fatiha, Surat al Ladina Anamta Alayhim, yes, it is correct that it refers to the people within um, Surah An-Nisa, in particular verse 69 of that. But in specific, when we look much deeper, we also see that we cannot ignore the teachings in Surah Azab, verse 33, to find out exactly whose path we're talking about. And when we look even further, we see that the idea of Anamta Alayhim is so profound that there have been a number of discussions in the Holy Quran about who the Ahlul Bayt are as well as what they did to qualify them for being the guides for this particular straight path, this particular Surat al Mustaqim. We see, for instance, in Surah Insan, Surah 76, verse 5, talks about the Abrar, the specially chosen righteous. Followers of the path of Allah SWT, upon whom there is a special grace. We see the holy words being Inna al-abrara yashrabuna min ka'sin kana mizajuhum kafura. That indeed the righteous, the abrar, will drink from a special cup of heavenly bounty from Kautha. Um, and here we see the idea of a mixture of kafur. These are heavenly allegories. But the key operative term in this verse is abrar, the righteous. And from a practical psychology point of view, we ask, well, why? What, what, what happened? Who are they? What did they do to qualify them for this particular accolade and to help us understand what their path is? So when we think about Sirat al-Mustaqim and Sirat al-Ladina Anamta Alayhim, 
the straight path, the path of those whom you have blessed. What did they do to qualify for that? Well, amongst the many things, we see specific accounts in this Surah Insan that makes it very clear. Now, of course, these accounts that I'm about to narrate are within um, uh, uh, commentaries uh, from the tafsir tradition of the Shia school of thought. But in particular, I'm citing Zamakhshari, who is a celebrated mufassir, a uh, commentator from the Sunni tradition, such that when we look at the abrar, it can actually form a a point of, of, of gathering, of, of peace, of meeting across the Muslim Ummah. So what does Zamakh Shari say about this? Well, he narrates, he narrates that there was, and he cites Ibn Abbas, a, a, a famous source of hadith, um, uh, respected from the Muslim community at large, um, that once uh, the grandsons of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy progeny, um, Imam Hassan alayhi salam, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, uh, were unwell. And uh, their parents, the illustrious Imam Ali alayhi salam, and our Lady of Light, Bibi Fatima Zahra sallallahu alayhi uh, kept a fast, a nadar. And their nadar was that if the children were to recover, then they would fast for three days. And so we see a connection between the verse that we were looking at and, 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 and subsequent verses. For example, in, 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 um, in verse 7 of uh, Surah Insan, which talks about, in terms of clarifying these people, it says, Yufuna bin Nadri. These are the people who fulfill their vows. And Zamakshri talks about what were this, what was the context of this vow. So they kept a vow that if the children get well, they will fast for three days. And we see that... Um, this was a family that had given everything they had. And Imam Ali al-Islam was able to procure three, also three units of, of barley to, um, that uh, Bil Fatima al-Islam was then able to, to prepare into bread. And the famous narration is that on the first night at the time of iftar, there was a knock on the door. And a person said that I'm a needy person, I'm a miskeen, will you help me? And without any hesitation, the family gave their iftar to this person, the bread that was baked. And then they fasted the second day, because the nadar was to fast three days. And on the second day, when they prepared the second unit of barley, Guru Fatima Salam prepared that, there was a knock and a child's voice said that I am an orphan, I'm a yatim, will you feed me? And again, despite having fasted for the second day, they gave that bread that they had, they gave their iftar away. And on the third day, you can imagine how long and difficult that fast must have been, without having had a proper iftar the preceding two nights. At the end of the third day, the final bit of food they had, the final barley that, that was uh, made into barley bread, was going to be their iftar, yet there was a knock on the door. And it said, the person said that I am an Asir, I am a prisoner of war, and I am hungry, will you feed me? And despite having fasted for three days, the family gave without any hesitation. And it is said that at that point, when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, saw what the family had done and, and, and the state of the family physically, that Jibreel himself descended to congratulate the Holy Prophet on having such a family, and these verses were then revealed. So, verse 7 of Surah Insan, Surah 76, which clarifies who the Abrar are that we discussed in uh, the, the preceding uh, verse, verse 5. So, verse 7 goes on to clarify. It says, Yufuna bin Nadri. So, the Abrar are the people who fulfill their vows. Yufuna bin Nadri, wa yakhafuna yawman kana shadduhu mustatira that they, having fulfilled their vows, they do so out of a mindfulness of the day whose evil will be widespread. And we are reminded of our previous discussion of Maliki Yawmiddin in the middle of Surah Fatiha, where Allah SWT reminds us that, 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 that having established the, the, the platform of His bounty, of His grace, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, there is also accountability, Maliki Yawmiddin. And so we see from Surah Insan that Sirat al ladina Anamta Alayhim, the path of those upon whom there is grace, are those who remain mindful of that Yawm al-Din. 
And that is reflected again in verse 7. And it continues into verse 8. وَيُطْمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ And they feed purely out of love of him. مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَعْصِيرًا The poor person, the orphan, and the prisoner. And we may ask ourselves, who amongst us is not spiritually impoverished? Who amongst us is not orphaned by our parents, teachers, ancestors who have guided us to the path? And who amongst us is not a prisoner to the shackles of shaitan? And so this verse applies to us, and so the, their shafa becomes necessary for us. And in the final verse that we discuss in, 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 in verse 9 of Surah Insan, it clarifies why. They say, Surely we feed you purely for the sake of Allah. La nuridu minkum jaza'an wa la shukura. We do not require from you even thanks or an acknowledgement. Of any kind. This is about unconditional giving. And we see that reflected in the unconditionality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's grace represents. So the path of those who are truly the recipients of his grace are those who manifest the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we discussed in our earlier um, um, uh, analysis of the verse Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim that he describes himself, Allah SWT describes himself as the most compassionate, the most merciful. That the, the idea of Rahman is like the rainfall that falls upon everyone and everything. Unconditional love. Rahim is that particular grace for those who acknowledge and turn to him. And we see the higher level, the path of those upon whom there is the grace of Allah, are those who have collected the rainfall and offer it as a cup to others. In keeping with the teaching of the Holy Prophet, peace upon him, being rahmatun lil alameen, being a rahma, being a source of grace and compassion for the whole of creation. And so if we really want to follow the sirat al-mustaqeen, the straight path, sirat al anamta alayhim, the path of of those who Allah has showered with His grace, we see that it is the path of service. And this we learn in the clarifications of Surah Insan, having established in Surah Adab that we're talking about the Ahlul Bayt here, who have been given a thorough purification in verse 33 of Surah Azab. And what they did, we see in Surah Insan, as being service. And when we look at the psychology of this, our discussions are about the psychology of Surah Fatiha and how we may be able to implement it in our daily lives. When we recite this verse 7 of Surah Fatiha 10 times a day, and we remind ourselves of Sirat al Ladina Anamta Alayhim, that we want to be on the path of those who have been blessed, who have tasted the sweetness of connection with Allah SWT. We are reminded to follow the teachings of Dahl Bayt And let us look at two practical things. Firstly, when we look at the psychology of altruism, the, psych the, the psychology of service, we have a growing body of literature, of scientific literature, about the benefits to the person giving the service. Um, all too often, uh, previously, um, scientists looked at the benefit of, her, of, of receiving service on your mental health, and they didn't find much connection. But when they started looking at the benefit for mental health from giving service, then we started getting fantastic results. Not just in terms of a wider well-being, but also in terms of depression in specific. That people who um, have actively provided service and volunteering have... Uh, lower levels of reported depression. Also, um, volunteering has evidence of, 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 of better overall health, not just physical health uh, and mental health together, but also for greater longevity. There was a paper published in 2007 that um, highlighted that. We've got broader improvements of mood. Um, we've also got aspects of buffering for stress. There was an interesting paper in the year 2000, uh, where, where you know people are worried about the effect of stress on their on, on, on their physical health, on their mental health, yet we see evidence that those who engage in service 
That service serves as a buffering to the negative effects of stress. So they get a form of inoculation, a form of vaccine to buffer the negative impacts upon their well-being. It reminds us of the prayer we offer in Kunut during our Salah of Rabbana Atina Fid Dunya Hasana. Oh Allah, give me blessings in this world, hasana, and blessings in the hereafter. But the point is that we begin to benefit straight away when we practice the teachings of the path of those who have been blessed. Surat al an'amta alayhim. We also see from neuroscience, um, for instance, in uh, fMRI imaging of the brain, that when people uh, are engaging in in, in reciprocal um, uh, goodwill, when, 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 when people are, are helping each other, the reward centers of the brain are activated. We feel good straight away, almost as though our fitra, our, our inherent nature, we, almost as though it has been hardwired to respond to the teachings of akhlaq from the Ahlbayt of service. And it is therefore not by coincidence that the Ahl Bayt were the greatest examplars of the teaching of the Holy Prophet upon him when he said, that I have been sent, surely I have been sent for the perfection of human character. Because the path of akhlaq, of, 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 of ethics, of good character, of good practical psychology that we're seeing in terms of service is the path of those who are graced and blessed, is the Sirat al Anamta Alayhim. And so if we truly want to follow this path, then we need to engage in practical actions. And service is a particularly valuable path. It also allows us to think about something different to what we may be concerned about at any point in time. Thinking about the challenges that other people are facing not only provides them with support, it also helps us as well. So it allows us to aim for fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. That serving one another provides a degree of, 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 of benefit to ourselves. It is not just helping us for the hereafter, but it is nourishment for us now. Giving us a clue about this aspect of the wider surah Fatiha that we're encouraged to recite at least 10 times a day to remind us of all the grace that is upon us. We looked at the aspect of hamd and the thankfulness aspect of hamd when we say alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. We also turn in this idea of sirat al anamta alayhim, the path of those who have received grace, we turn to the aspect of sharing that which we have, even if it is sharing our listening, sharing our heart, giving empathy. That can serve as a healing factor, both to the person afflicted as well as to the person listening, so that all may benefit through the grace of the practical psychology of Surah Fatiha. Let us end, therefore, with a prayer for all those who have uh, guided us, our teachers, our parents, our ancestors, who have guided us to this great fountain of Surah Alhamd. And let us conclude with a Surah Fatiha for the benefit of their souls. Surah Mubarak Al-Fatiha. <laughs> Mm-hmm.